Welcome back to our Komogi Coach webinar series. We hope that each webinar will give you the coach insights and practical takeaway ideas that you can bring to your own coaching practice. Our second webinar is providing children with a meaningful sporting experience with Barry Burke and Barry Milan. Both Barry Burke and Barry Milan are co-founders of the company Active Sports Coaching, where they focus on physical literacy, multi-sport coaching in schools and clubs, and providing coach education opportunities for coaches. Have your pen and paper ready and enjoy the learning. And thanks for having us on, um, and I hope everybody's keeping well. Um, this is a, a second webinar leading on from Cullum's one a couple of weeks ago. Um, Cullum gave a lot of very insightful practical tips to take uh, and how to incorporate fundamentals. So we're, myself and Barry are going to be looking at how we can provide children with what we call a meaningful sporting experience. So Barry's going to talk a little bit more uh, later on about what we classify as a meaningful sporting experience. And, and before he goes into that, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about general why kids play sport and what we can do to affect it and possibly why, why they might drop out. So what do we view as what a meaningful experience in sport is? Um, the classical meaningful experience might be what you can see there in the team picture, which is winning, winning trophies, winning championships, winning matches. Uh, and for a lot of children playing Komogi, that may be the case, that, was, that might be what they find as meaningful. But for an awful lot of children, there's a lot more to it than that. And, and the other picture can echo that a little bit where you can see the sportsmanship and that could possibly be between friends or between between players and on opposite teams. So there's a lot more to it than just the stereotypical team winning matches. Um, there's a, kids take a lot more out of sport than just that. So what we're going to look at first is why do children play sport? Um, it'll be no surprise that uh, number one there you'll see is, is for fun and enjoyment. This is key. Uh, this is, this is the, the number one reason why children will play sport and will keep coming back and playing sport. Our job here as Komogi coaches is to make sure that our kids are enjoying their sessions, having fun while they're there and keep them playing their game, keep them involved in Komogi. And that's key. Uh, anything else will be extras and bonuses, but if we keep them coming back, that's our number one job as, as coaches. Kids love to play. Sport is play. So what we want to try and make sure is that they get that sense of play when they come to our sessions. And number two is be with friends. I know Nai Corcoran mentioned this um, on his podcast in the Coach and Bubble. Uh, I was just listening to it the other day and he was saying a lot of uh, people or girls will just come to your sessions just to be with their friends. Um, they have no interest maybe in generally in the sport or even any kind of activity, but their best friend is doing it, so they're coming along. So we as coaches have to incorporate that into our session. We have to be very wary of the fact that they just want to be there to be with their friends. And how can we bring that along through, through what we're doing in our sessions? So certain activities, we better make sure that they're with their friends for certain activities. And then maybe for other activities, we can ensure that they're with other people to try to develop new friendships and, and new social interactions in the group. Uh, be like their mum and dad. So this is two sides to it. Uh, if their mum and dad play sport or have played sport or still play sport and their children might look up to them. So their girls might look up to their mum, especially if she plays Komogi as a role model and that might encourage them to want to play the game uh, and keep involved in it. And the second side of it is mum and dad as, as parents um, on the sideline of matches, if they can be showing uh, good sportsmanship, good respect to coaches, respect to referees, uh, and the children can see this. This creates the positive sporting environment for them and keeps them more than likely to uh, stay involved, stay playing sports. Uh, number four there is learn new skills. Children love learning. So they love learning and they love conquering new skills. So what we as coaches have to make sure is that our skills that we do, our activities that we do, gives them the sense of accomplishment. So there are skills that they're actually able to perform and that they actually can get better at uh, and they can improve. And once they have done proved that, let them know that they've improved, let them know they're getting better and then bring them on and challenge them a little bit more. Uh, five, links in with that a little bit, which is feeling more competent. So children play sport because they want to, if, if they can be more competent at the activities and the skills that we do, and that's our job as coaches, 
is to help them feel more confident. They'll keep coming and they'll keep wanting to play. So we, again, falling back to the age appropriate activities, making sure that what we're getting them to do, they're able to complete it. If they can complete it, that will give them that sense of confidence where they're happy enough, they know they can do the activity, which will build the confidence and will help them want to keep coming back. So we have to make sure that that's built into our sessions so that uh, if they get that sense of confidence, which is why they play. These are all taken from, uh, you can see the reference at the bottom of the baby, but it's it's from the, the coaching Ireland coaching children course. Um, but again, this list is, is numerous, there's a way more to it, but we just have summarized it down to, to them five. Um, if we look then at the opposite side of it, just before we bring that side up, I just want to play this little video, which um, is from a movie trailer, but it, it might resonate with a lot of coaches there. So we'll just play this, it's only about a minute or so. Children learn a lot about life from sports, teamwork, discipline, and fair play. Values that can only be passed on by a kind, caring, mature head coach. We gotta pummel them at all costs. I want you to play dirty if you have to, but don't get caught. Hit the field. Let's go. What was that? I, I thought I had the shot. You thought? You're thinking like a crazy person. Grab some bench. <laughs> hey, you just deserve a plate of humiliation. How's that feel? Oh, my God. Get off me. Pick up that piece of trash, Tom. Tuck in your shirt. What are you doing? Have a sense of pride. In fact, why don't you take a lap? Go. Faster. You called a group of 10-year-olds losers. You're losers. You're losers. Okay, so again, slightly exaggerated because it is uh, a movie, but I'm sure lots of us out there have, have seen coaches like that displaying certain traits like that on the sideline. And um, maybe there's still some of them there, hopefully not too many. Um, but what we want to do is looking at that, is that creating a, a meaningful experience for the children in that environment, any of them kind of traits. So if we look at why they drop out and link that back into that video, number one is too serious or adult like. So that coach was taking the children and treating them like it was an adult team. So we don't want to do that. The children are not many adults. So what they do is they won't take, they won't uh, respond to that kind of an environment. Uh, so what we have to do is completely flip it, make sure that they're enjoying the sessions, that it's fun and the focus is not uh, too serious all the time. And that links in with number two here, which is the emphasis on winning. Uh, if we look at ourselves, who really puts the emphasis on winning when we're talking about when it comes to, to underage camogie matches? Generally, do the children want to win the matches? Of course they do. That's naturally in the majority of children, they'll want to win it. Uh, but they go play the game and if they don't win the game, within five minutes, they're chatting about something else, they're talking about something else, they've forgotten about it. Whereas we as coaches tend to uh, might be sitting in the car and we might overthink it and we could be thinking about it for hours about what we could have done or what we didn't do or why we didn't win this game or why we didn't win that game. Uh, the children don't care. They, they, they just want to play the game, have fun, play with their friends, get involved in the activities. So again, that's just us as adults maybe putting the overemphasis on winning. Internal competition or favourites. So this could be such a simple little thing of just the coaches using the same names over and over again. So praising the same children over and over again. So the children that looks like the coach has favorites in the group, what we need to be doing is to counteract that is such a simple, make sure that all children are getting the equal amount of feedback, the equal amount of praise um, from, from the coaches. Make sure we're knowing all our names of our children uh, that come to our group. And a great little tip is to try find out something about the children from outside the Komogi session. So find out something about you know their activities they might be doing or the sports they could be playing or uh, they could be doing shows or anything like that and ask them about that on their way into training session it just shows that you're showing an interest in all of your children uh, pushy coaches and parents so 
the pushy parents side of things could be simple like that are the child just being forced to go to training because the parents want them to be there so we don't we want our children to want to come to camogie we don't want them to be forced we want them to be asking our parents to go i want to go to camogie train i want to go to camogie train so we, if they're forced down that's a bad starting point straight off when they get there then the pushy coaches might be trying to push them into doing something that they're not comfortable doing or they're not able to do and that'll lead back to, to the five year again and we talked about it on why they do play sport and the low confidence and competence so if we're pushing them to do stuff that they're just not able to do yet maybe they're not they haven't uh, developed quite the same as other girls in their age group. Maybe they're completely new to Komogi and only learning the skills and we're trying to push them into doing stuff that they're not able to do yet. What this leads to is a low confidence level. They're not able to do the activities and to counteract that is a low confidence level. That means their confidence levels are going to be low because they're not able to complete what they're doing uh, and they're just going to drop out. They're just going to pack it in and give it give up. So we want to make sure, again, reiterating that point of making sure that all our activities are appropriate for each girl in our age group and that the activities can be tailored to make sure that everybody gets the chance to be able to be competent at the skills. If we look at a general over, uh, overall in guidelines on in terms of physical activity, um, and we here as Komogi coaches play a huge role in trying to promote physical activity amongst girls um, right up through the age groups, right up to adult. So this is taken from the, the Children's Sports Participation and Physical Activity Study from two years ago, um, which is done through Sport Ireland and Sporting NI, Northern Ireland. So they looked at it and we had 13% of Irish children reported meeting the physical activity guidelines. So it's a slight drop from, from 2010, which was eight years previous. But again, it's worrying that these figures are dropping and not, not increasing. Uh, only 17% of primary 11% of post-primary school children meet the guidelines for physical activity. Again, these dropped down from 2010. Um, so we're looking at post-primary, uh, especially at the key age group for dropout amongst girls. So that's uh, something that we as Komogi coaches can hopefully help uh, turn the tide on this a little bit. So if specifically looking at girls, fewer girls meet the, the physical activity guidelines than boys. So 9% of girls, 17% of boys and it's evident in both primary and post-primary schools. So you can see the primary school figures is 13% of girls versus 23% of boys, and post-primary is 7% versus 14%. What can we do to change these figures? Again, it's looking at some of the stuff that we've talked about previously, about trying to make our sessions enjoyable, trying to encourage the girls to stay as much as possible. If they're having fun in our sessions, they will keep coming and hopefully start to bring some of their friends along. Uh, if we create the right environment for them and these can all help to promote these figures and get these figures back up again. Uh, active children reported higher levels of happiness. Um, so if they're active, if they're involved in sport, um, they tend to, 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 to be deemed to have higher levels of happiness. So uh, again, similar to this, what we just talked about, uh, if we can keep them having fun in their sessions, if they're happy, uh, keep them keeping them active, they keep coming. Um, and I know that um, there was a study done recently, John Murphy on his PhD released it on the Irish Times, also about how, how being active can help with, with mental health, especially in secondary school children as well. And that study is there to have a little look at if you want. Um, the last thing we're going to talk about before I hand over to Barry is uh, an organisation we came across a couple of years ago called I Coach Kids. Um, some of you might be very familiar with them. If, if not, look them up, look up their website, look up their YouTube channel. Um, it's a great organization, lots of coaching associations, national coaching associations are linked in with them and they're very keen on promoting uh, sport amongst children, uh, promoting good coach education and promoting good practice from our coaches right through a full range of sports uh, worldwide. What we've done, we've been at a couple of their conferences and they keep re the next slide I'm going to show you is something that they keep reiterating. Um, they've kind of summarized down all their kind of key guidelines and key findings down to what they call they call the iCoach Kids Plex, which is 10, 10 things that basically help create this positive experience for children in sport. We create that positive experience, they'll keep coming. So I'm just going to quickly show you what they are and you can have a little look through them. Um, so the first one is be child-centered. Very simple is, is make everything about the child. Okay, so we're not looking to make, coaching is not about the adults, it's not about 
and the coaches, it's, it's about the children. So we have to make sure everything revolves around that. Number two is be holistic. So you want to make sure that we want to develop the child as a person as well. So we want to make sure that they're challenged um, as well as physically. We want to make sure that they're challenged psychologically. So keep them having to think about what they're doing and developing that side of stuff as well. Being inclusive. So that is, again, what we've talked about earlier on is making sure that everything we do is uh, able to be done by everybody. You know, so uh, are, our, are our sessions fully inclusive of all the people that are there? Uh, maybe there's people that don't don't come to our sessions because it's not inclusive or we're not able to cater for them. So we have a little think about that. How, what can we do to make sure we're catering for everybody? Make it fun and safe. So fun, we've talked about loads already. Um, safe is the second one. We just want to make sure that they want to feel safe in that, in that coaching environment. So that's feeling safe with the coaches, with the players around them, with the surroundings that they're in. So we as coaches have that ob obligation to make sure that the, that safe environment is there uh, as well as catering for the fun side of things. Prioritize the love for sport about above learning sport. So again, I think uh, Niall talked about this in his podcast, is we want to develop that love for Komogi. So we want to make sure that when they come in at six or seven or eight and they're starting out in our sport, that when they get to adults, they still have that love for sport and that they're still involved. It might necessarily be as a player. It could be as you're a coach, it could be as a secretary, it could be as the child protection officer, it could be anything. So we want, to, but we want to make sure that anyone who comes in and starts playing Komogi is still there and become the lifelong participants in our sport. Focus on the foundational skills. We would put a massive emphasis on that in what we do as our company. Uh, we, you have to develop the basic fundamental skills in children before we can progress. So we're talking about developing the uh, fundamental movement skills of running, jumping, throwing, catching, all that, kicking, all that kind of stuff. And if we have them building blocks in place, well, then we can start to build on the sport specific Mogi skills as we're going along. But if we can't do all the basics, we'll find it very, very hard to be able to coach them in Komogi skills if we don't have these building blocks behind us. Engage parents positively. So we want to, parents can have a huge role to play with us. So all we want to do is keep that communication with our parent group open at all times. So we hopefully could get them involved in some role. Again, there's loads of roles that we need um, at, at, in this day and age outside of just the coaches. So sometimes they can be a little bit nervy about maybe not having experience to coach. Just get them involved, see them, in, see them involved with the kids and in, in the activities. And if we can engage them into it and get the parents involved, that could also lead to um, the children staying with us and staying playing Komogi too. So plan progressive programs. We talked about this a bit earlier. So we want to challenge the kids. So as soon as they've learned the skills and, and we can see that they're, they've, they've progressed on and they've got better at them, are our programs progressive enough that we can start to develop and move them on? Okay, and so we don't want the things to get stale. We don't want the kids to get bored. We want to be able to plan our sessions so that they're challenged the whole time and they're also developing the skills of the game. So use different methods to enhance learning. So children learn in, in different ways. So some of them might be visual learning. Some of them might just want to be able to practice it. Some might need to be talked through a little bit more. Um, and we as coaches need to be aware of all this. And if we, are, if we are aware of the fact that children learn in many different ways, it can help us to create that environment because we now know that we have to cater to certain learning styles differently with different children. Um, so we might have to be wary of some people in your group, we might have to coach them one way and other people in the group, we might have to coach them a different way. And if everyone sees that the children are being coached like that and the kids can see it and, and we're catering for all that, again, it helps create that good environment. And the last one is use comp competition in a developmental way. So competition is can be great. Uh, children are naturally very competitive, a lot of them. So what we want to do is how can we use that comp competition in a development way? So we don't want to put the focus on just winning and, and that being all competition could be a great way of kids learning about uh, learning about respect, learning how to maybe not to be winning all the activities. Um, so what we can do is to bring competition into some of the activities that we do. So maybe they're competing against themselves to get a higher score or a better score, uh, competing with a partner, change the partners around, uh, change the activities around so that everybody gets a chance maybe at at getting uh, and being competitive in, in the activity that you're doing and it's not the same people that are winning it the whole time. 
So you again tailoring all the activities to the group, but that's sense bringing in that sense of the competition, again will help children develop uh, that sense of of fair play um, and respect to other competitors as well. So that's me, guys. Uh, thanks very much. I'm going to hand over to Barry now, and he's going to talk a little bit more about uh, what exactly is a meaningful experience. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. That was really good. Um, so providing kids with a with a meaningful sporting experience. So before we move on to that, um, we need to ask yourself, I want you to ask yourself as a coach, what kind of coach are you? Okay. So this is a, a graphic from uh, Dr. Keith Davids. Okay. He is a, a world renowned academic uh, in constraints led approaches and um, ecological dynamics kind of games-based approaches to, to me and you. Um, and he is uh, an expert on, uh, on coaching as well. So he, he describes kind of four different types of coach. All right, so the first one here is the, the safe certain coach, All right? And that's the kind of coach that's um, on autopilot all the time. Um, a coach that's complacent. Um, everything is very rehearsed. Um, a coach that's operating um, all the time in their um, in their comfort zone. Okay, and most and most coaches are probably in this um, area here, the safe certain coach. Um, but what I can tell you about this kind of coach here is that there is a, a good or a better or creative coach waiting to be released. Okay, we move down here then to the unsafe certain coach. Okay, this is where we don't. We don't want to be down here. So the don't save certain coaches, the the very controlling coach. You know, we all need some semblance of control. Uh, you know, coaching the coaching the girls, but the coach is constantly negative. The coach is constantly um, telling the girls, you know, what not to do. Don't do this. Don't point your hurley there. Don't put your feet there. Instead of telling the girls what they have to do. Okay, uh, the coach that's that's constantly uh, critical. You know, asking questions like, you know, why, what was that? Or what are you doing? Okay, tell the girls what they need to do in a, in a positive way. Um, the unsafe, a characteristic of the unsafe certain coach would be limited participation. Whether it's, uh, you know, five or six girls lined up behind a cone waiting for, to use a ball. Okay, the girls come down to our Kamoi clubs to, to play ball, not, around, not to wait around for it. Or, the coach that might have a 10 v 10 uh, game, a big game like that, where some kids will, will just dominate it. And there's limited participation for the girls. Move over here then to the unsafe certainty coach, where we certainly don't want to be. The dangerous coach or the unclear coach, where the girls are anxious coming down. You know, we want our coaching sessions to be the best part of their week. We, we want the girls to look forward to coming down. And they're not going to come down if they're constantly being anxious or there's a fear there. And a real characteristic of that unsafe, uncertain coach is the coach that's obsessed with winning. There's no, there's no chance of, of creativity with that obsessive coach that always wants to win. The girls are afraid to make a mistake okay, and become anxious. So that's not what we want. What we want to be, and certainly what we should be striving to be, is the, the, the top one here, the top right, the safe, uns, uncertain coach. A coach that will explore that will challenge, that will embrace the challenge, a coach that will be innovative. I certainly don't um, proclaim to be uh, an innovative coach, but I tell you, I try to be, I try as best I can to be the innovative coach. You know, we, how do we keep the girls coming down week after week? You know, Barry um, mentioned earlier on about why kids play and why they don't play, right? And if we're not willing to, to challenge ourselves as coaches, well then, um, girls will stop coming down, okay? So what is meaningful, a meaningful experience? Well, um, I'm lucky enough at the moment to have a, a, a role with um, Mary I in Limerick um, lecturing with the PE department. Uh, and when it came to, to physical education, the teacher study up there, I came across the, the six features of meaningful PE. Now, we've all been on courses where um, you know, we talk about the role of the coach, whether it was a camogie course or a GA course, whether it's a soccer one or a rugby one, you know, we, we talk a lot about the role of the coach, you know, the, 
build rapport and make decisions and um, provide feedback and those kind of things. And I, I just came across this and I felt it was a better way of describing the coaching role. And there, there are six features. Okay, so the social interaction, um, Barry mentioned earlier on, kids come down to make friends. Appropriate challenge. So if we're not providing an appropriate challenge, will the girls keep coming back down? Uh, developing motor competence, um, Colm did a great webinar on, uh, on that um, at the last, last time around. Fun, of course, okay. Uh, and then delight and personally relevant learning. So I'm going to go through them with you. So social interaction is the first one here. Okay, and social interaction is, is teamwork, and sharing positive experiences and shared positive participation with others. Um, you know, social interaction is the very, is the essence of the GEA. Um, they're there to make friends, as, as, as we spoke uh, spoke about. They're to interact with other children. Okay. Uh, the GA club, our Komogi club, is a place for, for lifelong learning and, and, and social interaction. Um, you think of the great player. Our job as coaches, you know, is, is to try and coach the, the girls that will go on and stay in that club forever, hopefully. Uh, that, that girl might go on and be the PRO. That girl might go on and be the chairperson. Okay, she might just grow up to be a supporter of the club, play into adulthood, play in the social hurling. Okay, you know, we're not there to coach the, to become a Beth Carton or a Cot de Van. All right, we're super proud of them if, if that does happen. Okay, but, but you know, they're, they're the very elite. Okay, most of us will go on and uh, what we want is to go on and be involved in the club um, into, our, into, into adulthood. Or if, if you're like me, play very badly when you're, when you're all almost 40 with my, with my club. I'm still trying to play. Okay, but I got, I got that desire to keep playing through social interaction. Okay, not, not a, a desire to, to play for tip. Okay, it was to keep playing because I love the game and I love the experiences of being part of a GA club. Okay. I came across this quote recently, right? Um, education is not filling a bucket, but it's lighting a fire uh, from Yates. Okay, how do we light that fire? That's the question we must ask ourselves. Okay, so we must provide appropriate challenge. Not too easy where the girls get bored, not too hard where the girls can't do it. Okay, and they'll be discouraged and their motivation decreases. Okay, and I think a way to do that is a games-based approach. I'm a big believer in it. I think whatever you do as a coach, whatever skill you're working on, try and have some sort of decision-making in your, in your game or your drill or whatever you want to call it. Um, if you think back to maybe drills that you would have done, um, you know, we can't tell the girls where to hit the ball, where to run and who to pass it all the time. Try and get them in, to make some sort of uh, decision. Okay, be creative. If you're going to provide an appropriate challenge, you need to be creative uh, as a coach. And if we're going to create creative players, that's how we that's how we do it. Take chances yourself. Think back to the 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 un, the, the safe, uncertain coach. The coach is willing to try things. All right. And if you're going to provide an appropriate challenge for the children, okay, we must uh, try things ourselves. Okay? Not be afraid to make a mistake. Okay. If you, as a coach, accept that you're going to make a mistake and learn from them, you'll be the better coach, and you'll enjoy coaching a lot more. I can tell you right now that my favorite part of coaching uh, boys and girls is coming up with a game or adapting a game or an exercise or a drill and then see if it works in training, all right? Sometimes it works great. Sometimes the players take ownership of it, ownership of it uh, and take it in a complete different direction. And sometimes it doesn't work at all and it's a disaster, but that's okay because you learn and we can try and change it and improve it for next week. Um, a book I read recently uh, during the last lockdown was called uh, Creating Innovators. And Dr. Robert Sternberg um, spoke about creativity. And he said that um, the problem is that sometimes we as, we as in uh, coaches or teachers, we treat co uh, creativity as a bad habit. And like any habit, okay, creativity it can be encouraged or discouraged. And we must encourage creativity. The girls must be encouraged to try things and express themselves. Okay, and not be afraid of uh, retribution from the sideline uh, and not be like the, the coach in the, in the video that Barry showed you. 
motor confidence. Okay, and I won't spend too long on this. Um, Colm uh, did an excellent webinar recently on this, so we, we won't say too long. But, you know, the girls must learn and develop uh, the physical skills necessary to play. Okay, and it's important for a number of reasons. Okay, fundamental movement skills are life skills. Okay, they're important for future sports participation. Um, they're important for the perception of themselves. You know, if we can't catch or pass, or run properly, hop or skip or jump properly, okay, it's going to be very hard to, to coach Komogi, as Barry mentioned earlier on. Okay, and if they're not, if they don't have those skills, it demotivates them and they think, I'm not good enough. I can't do that. I won't be able to do that. Um, yesterday with, with, in my class up in Mary I, such as it was, it was an online, uh, online class. We were discussing um, fundamental movement skills uh, and weight status. And there is an inverse relationship between them. So unfortunately, we are on course, I think by 2030, um, to be the most obese um, or uh, nation in Europe. Okay, uh, one in four of our children are obese or overweight. Uh, and that's from a growing up in Ireland report. And I guarantee you a lot of those kids, okay, who are overweight have poor fundamental movement skills. Again, there's a really demoting factor there in not, in not having motor confidence. So it's up to us as, as coaches to try to, to try and improve the girls' motor comp confidence. And the key is combining the Kogi skills with those. Fun. I mean, fun is crucial, obviously. Um, we must, you know, fun is activities that hold immediate enjoyment. Okay, we have to make kids to want to participate. Okay, not force them down to play, but make them want to come down and play, if, if you know what I mean. And fun should be the vehicle for learning. Okay, as a coach, you know, we shouldn't accept that, that fun is the be all and end all. And what I mean by that is that if we see the girls having fun, we as coaches should go, right, job done. Okay, the kids must learn something, but we try and use fun as a vehicle for that learning. And again, this comes back to creativity again. How do we do that? Delight then. So what is this? Right? It's a deeper sense of achievement. Okay, and the coach's role is, is crucial here. You know, um, praising, providing that, that, relevant, uh, that relevant feedback. So, um, you know, not just saying, well done, well done, or, or what I'm guilty of, right, saying, good job, good job. Well, tell them what they are doing well. You know, we have to spot it. it whether it's scoring a goal or a point, or it could be, it could be doing a pickup for the first time, or, or putting their feet in the right place, something. You know, telling them what they're doing really well. Okay, and your, your role is, is, is crucial in that. Okay. And then finally, the personally relevant learning. Okay, are making it, it uh, ensuring personally relevant learning. The why, why are we doing this? Okay, um, what can we do? How can we, what can we do different? Um, how can we be better? Okay, and reflection. So when we, reflection is, is often spoken about in coach education terms and rightly so. Um, and we have, if you look up reflection, um, you'll come across Gibbs' a cycle there in the graphic, all right? And uh, if you're not reflecting on your practice, on your coaching, um, then you're not planning. It's simple as that. So important, we, so we reflect in action uh, and reflect on action. So what I mean by reflecting in action is that reflection in action is kind of the live reflection. The reflection when coach training is going on. So are we providing that appropriate challenge? Are the girls enjoying this? Okay, are they having fun? Are they able to do this? I've been able to go, right, I need to change this. Um, reflection on action then is done after the event, whether that's you as a coach personally reflecting or you uh, as, your, as a coaching group reflecting after a session. When we reflect, guys, it's all it's hugely important that we look back on what went well too. Okay. So when we think of um criticism, we think criticism and we think bad. Okay. Criticism is a two-way street. Right? A critical analysis of your session reflects on, yeah, what you need to do better. But it's also important to reflect on what went well. You know, it's good for yourself, 
to see what you're doing well. Okay, it's good to see that, um, okay, the girls enjoyed this, I'm gonna keep doing that or something like that. Um, another thing about reflection and self-reflection is always not the most accurate, okay? So we might just miss something or, or even refuse to reflect on it. We might miss what we're doing well too. We might think that was a disaster. But if you're, you know, if you think back, actually, do you know what? I did a few things right. So where, what I'd recommend to you is to um, video yourself coaching once or twice a year because the camera doesn't lie. And you can look at your practice and you will see things that are not going well, but you will also see things that you're doing well. And if you're that coach that videos yourself, you will see things that you're doing really well and you will feel better about yourself. Okay. One of my favorite um, quotes from an old lecturer of mine, Dr. Martin Toms. Okay. Winning isn't about results or silverware. It's keeping the kids, keeping the girls coming back week after week uh, and season after season. That's winning. We go back to the unsafe, uncertain coach, the coach that's obsessed with winning. Okay. Think about wanting to develop a creative player. Okay. If you're that coach that's obsessed with winning, like the girls would be afraid to make a mistake on the pitch. They'd be afraid to ex express themselves. Okay, and then no decisions will, will be made on the pitch. Okay, and, and playing becomes unenjoyable. Okay, they become afraid to make a mistake and that's the total opposite of what we want. Okay, so coaches, if your girls are coming back every week to your session, you're winning, uh, trust me. Uh, conclude there. So as a coach, right create excitement and challenge okay coach for enjoyment okay cultivate skill development and uh basic skill development in your players build character and confidence in those you coach okay and let your players play okay if the girls want to do cartwheels or handstands let them off let them play yes they must learn and we must use fun as a vehicle let them play okay This is just a bit about ourselves and our company, myself and Barry's company. Okay, we're called Active Sports Coaching. Um, so what we do is we provide, a, uh, we work off a multi-sport approach. So we work in primary schools and set up after school clubs uh, and we teach fundamental movement skills through a games-based approach and through multi-sports, all right? We provide coach education services, fundamental movement skill programs, uh, and that's our, our Twitter handle there at Coaching Active. Just some coaching resources that, that I've always found useful. So the lads in Coaching the Game, they have a couple of books out, uh, podcasts, they do webinars and they're really excellent. Um, Colin Nally has a couple of great books. He's brilliant on Twitter. He uh, has great content up there. Barry mentioned I Coach Kids. They're well worth a follow. Um, the GA Learning Portal is... Um, it's always really good uh, for, for info. Daily Sports Science then uh, is an excellent um, resource. Uh, the Dublin GA webinar series coming up, I think it's starting pretty soon, have some great speakers. And then uh, if you want a good coaching podcast, uh, the Coach Bubble have some fascinating guests. And finally, uh, for me, um, just a couple of books um, that I've read in the past in the past year, mostly during the last lockdown. So, coaching better every season from Wade Gilbert. Um, uh, the score takes care of itself. Uh, Bill Walsh and that famous Forty uh, Niners team, and uh, the Barcelona Way. It was a really excellent book about creating cultures, and then kind of books that not necessarily about sport. Uh, Black box thinking from Matt Said, and then. Um, Creating uh, Innovators is a book I'd highly recommend. So that's it from me, and thanks for listening. Thanks for watching our Camogie Coach webinar series. And we hope that you have got some insights and practical takeaway ideas that you can bring to your own coaching practice. Our next webinar, Performance Analysis with Thomas Mount, is on Thursday, the 12th of November. Until then, keep learning.